Hi and welcome back to Warframe. Today we're going to build the new whip in the dojo. Now this has actually been ready for two days, but I've been busy with some other stuff, so haven't really had a chance to buy this yet. Where is it? There it is. Ah, uh, the Skolak, Skoliak, yeah. whatever it's called. Should look really nice, and from everything I've heard, this is a really, really nice weapon. So we'll replicate that for fifty thousand. So, there's the blueprint there, it's another 30,000, which means it's 80,000 in total to build. Only needs one former though, which is a good thing because I've actually been building them thinking it was going to use a, f a few more. And it hasn't, which means eh, at least I can polarise some stuff. 1,200 plasteeds, that's not so bad. They seem, they seem to be dropping fairly nicely now. There was a point where they weren't dropping at all. So that's handy. 15,000 nanospores though, but again, they're dropping in huge numbers at the minute. Well, they have been for a while, just go do any missions on Eris for them. Plasteeds, I found, uh, what is it? Phobos, I still go there for that stuff. Uh, I can't remember the name of the survival mission there, or the defense mission. I want to see Keela, but that's not right. I think that's another planet. And mutagen mass. So the mutagen mass to build them, you're going to need, how is it, it uses 10 mutagen samples per one. Because then you've actually got to build from a blueprint, which you buy from the, the dojo. So it, it's something silly like 40 of them you'll need to build, 40 of the samples to build the mass, the mutagen mass. Or you can do the, the infested operations. They seem to be giving out a fair few of these recently. I actually went from having 10 to using 5 to now I've got 12. But it only uses 4, so we've actually got more than that free. Well, it's not really free. you still got to put the work in doing the missions. But it saved us having to build them, which is handy. So there is other ways of getting the mutagen mass without actually building them. As I say, that uh, the infested operations thing, they, they do have a chance of dropping them. Like, you, you can do the mission and then get them. But, it's 24 hours, so... Because I am two days behind on this, we'll click build on that and wait for the internet to catch up. And we're gonna hit rush on this. Because we want it now. And we'll go over to Arsenal. Hi, Graham. That's, I'll have to sell one of them. Go in here. Oh, I already did sell one of them, never mind. And there it is. Looks pretty cool actually, if you look at it, it kind of retracts into itself on your back. So you don't have it, the big long pool, that's what I was a bit worried about. That looks much nicer on your back. Uh, please have a, yes, it's got one polarity slot, that's all it needs, just one. We're not greedy, we don't need three or four polarity slots on a weapon to begin with, just one will do. It means we can make it a little bit nicer to start with. So we don't have to start off with nothing. And then have to form it and all the rest of it. And again, it's heavy on the slash damage. Ah, damn it. <laughs> I need to find that slash damage mod. Okay, so this weapon, yes, much better than the Lectus. But, it does suffer the same problems. Actually, all melee weapons suffer the same problem. The infested have insane knockback. But, this thing has such a big ground pound radius, it makes up for it. Problem is, it is more useful against the infested than any other enemy type. Which does cause the same problems of the getting rid of the infested. So, why bring out a weapon that is better against the infested? But, it has the same kind of damage specs that the the Dakra Prime does for uh, Impact Slash and Puncture, so it is a really nice melee weapon. The problem is, it suffers the same problem the Lecter does, and why bring out a, a melee weapon that is better against the enemy type who's meant to have created it? 
it doesn't really make much sense because especially not for the infested because the infested are only in certain missions now or in the derelict I actually had one of these doors where there was containers in front of uh, both of these I couldn't get through it I thought I was gonna have to quit the mission but I just went and killed myself instead so I had to use frost for this now it does need the charge damage mod pretty badly because the, the base uh, charge speed okay it says it's not really that bad but it really is but it, it makes up for it in the normal swing of it but the animation it still seems a bit buggy especially if you don't have the charge damage uh, speed mods on there because without the charge speed mods that animation when he puts his hand behind his back the whip kind of disappears for about a second and it looks really really weird as hell now I was actually doing a survival mission before this which kind of sucks because I wish I was recording it I stood there for 10 minutes each one and the only reason I didn't record it is I was playing music at the time Otherwise I would have just pressed record, but while in a game, jumping out to stop the music, it would have killed us because <laughs> the infested are evil at the melee. So I it, do regret that one straight away, mainly because for 10 minutes I just stood in one room and they would come to me, so I was just annihilating them. And it was, I was so impressed because they were level... 17 ish and it was just annihilating them ow but I mean come on that range was nuts I was here it's over there there's no other melee weapon apart from the glaive or the kestrel that will have the kind of range this does so it is a really nice melee weapon it's not overpowering the visuals either for the, I mean, is what I mean. They come to me and just off them until the big guys come. But even they die pretty easily. So I absolutely loved leveling this weapon up. Actually still do because I think it's about to turn 22. Uh, hang on, hang on. Why did he die? My sentinel's not shooting. It doesn't have the mod in. It cannot shoot. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, it's an infested weapon, so it does poison damage. Uh, you'll notice the lightning on the back of it there is blue. If we do a charged attack and put it back, you can see there's green lightning coming off it because it does a poison attack. So it does make it more useful against other factions because you can deal poison damage which does damage over time but it just seems way more powerful against the infested than any other factions see whip them and it just went 22 oh you can't see it no oh god damn it oh it's a damn shame can't even see the numbers coming off them actually that's a bit weird but yeah, it does poison over time, which is pretty useful. It just, I don't know what it is, but it seems to do a lot less damage to the corpus. There, uh, Grenier even, sorry. Than it does anything else. The corpus, it makes up for it with the electrical damage being on there. But the Grenier just seem immune to this weapon, which is a damn shame for something that... Come on, these guys were level 16, 17, sometimes 18, and was just one-shotting them without having to charge the weapon. Charging it, it will kill an infested ancient pretty easily. So, it is definitely worth it for the materials you've got to put into it. The fact you can get the mutagen mass now from pretty much anywhere. Uh, I do mean the mutagen mass, not the samples. It's the samples are in the derelict, which is still a huge shame. But with the operations being the infested, infesting planets, I love that. <laughs> Just one shot and a running guy. 
I just wish it would do that against all enemy types, not just infested. So if you're doing a lot of infestation missions, it is pretty useful. Missed him. There it is. The range is really nice. I mean, I do like this weapon. But mutagen mass now being available as a reward for these uh, infestation missions does make building it a lot easier as well. So I pretty much made back the four I had to put into it in was it two of the missions because there was two that were mutagen mass. So I got two of them back pretty much straight away. So I'm thoroughly enjoying this weapon. It's going to be great to level all the way up just went 22 the problem is you have to drop a catalyst into it let's see if we can't find some more enemies you've got to put a catalyst into it because it does need the charge speed mod and the charge damage mod may as well go in there as well because like everything else if you're going to put the charge mods in there you may as well go all out come on any more enemies no I hate it when the game does this to you it doesn't help the corpus are also in here killing everything. But yeah, it's much better with a catalyst in it. Just because the charge mods have got to go in here. You can sacrifice them and have them a bit lower level. But I mean, maxing them out is much better. And that's pretty much all we've done. The charge damage is... It's in there, but it's not leveled all the way up yet. And the charge speeds are in there and it is really nice so we'll leave that off here for now as i say it is better than the the lectus was at least for now anyway hopefully they will give that one a bit of a, another buff because they buff it originally plus the melee system when that first came out was broken anyway but it, it it's just weird it's more effective against the faction that created it but hopefully with melee 2.0 the block system will work because at the minute that's how I block. Just pulls the weapon out and then puts it straight away again and it's it's starting to get pretty old. Block damn you! <laughs> God damn it! So hopefully melee 2.0 will make it better. It is going to be fun to see how that works out especially with a whip considering you know it's got a long piece of string to it is that going to be out all the time or not so i'm looking forward to that in update 12 but we'll leave that off here for now thanks for watching and i'll catch you next time